California teachers, principals, and other school employees hope for a secure retirement. But the cost of paying for their pensions has soared and will rise further for at least several years. Despite increased state funding, many school districts find themselves in a tough balancing act. As pension costs have grown, they've taken up a bigger portion of the new money that districts have gotten every year. Pension costs are an obligation, not an option. To pay for pensions and other increased costs, some districts are canceling new programs like art, computer labs, or summer school, or not growing the programs they wanted to grow. Other districts are laying off teachers or giving smaller raises. Why is this happening? Most people can count on getting Social Security. Maybe they also have a 401k type retirement program. But teachers and administrators in California are not in the Social Security system. They get a defined benefit pension, a guaranteed retirement income based on how long they worked and what they earned. Take Gloria who plans to retire when she's 60 this year. Having taught for 33 years, she'll be entitled to a $60,000 per year pension, which is two-thirds of her final $90,000 annual pay. Gloria's pension and those of other teachers are paid by the California State Teachers Retirement System, or CalSTRS. CalSTRS pays benefits from a big pool of money that's fed by contributions, money from teachers and administrators pay, money from school districts' budgets, and money from California's general fund. CalSTRS invest these contributions, and the income that is generated is fed back into the pool. One problem is that the state increased CalSTRS retirement benefits in the good years, under the incorrect assumption that it had enough revenue to fully pay for benefits. The state also increased benefits for employees covered by CalPERS, the pension fund for other school workers, like secretaries and custodians. When the Great Recession hit, the value of CalPERS and CalSTRS investments and the income they depend on fell sharply. If nothing else were done, the reservoir levels would keep dropping. In a worst case scenario, the state would have to pay tens of billions of dollars from the general fund for pensions guaranteed for Gloria and future retirees. To restore the level, legislators passed a pension reform law, ordering all three contributors, teachers and administrators, school districts, and in the case of CalSTRS, the state, to pay more annually until the CalSTRS reservoir is full. The rates of increase weren't spread evenly, though. Teachers and administrators hired before the law are paying about 25% more. School districts and the state will pay more than double in 2020 to 2021, what they paid in 2013 to 2014. These pension payments will cost about an average of $1,500 per student from school districts' budgets, money districts could spend elsewhere. It's important to note that the 2012 pension reform law reduced benefits for new teachers and other employees. It raised the earliest retirement age for a full pension from 60 to 62. These changes will slightly reduce pension contributions over time. Recognizing that districts have a problem, Governor Gavin Newsom is proposing to pay part of the district's contributions for two years, starting in the school year of 2019 to 2020 and he is paying more of the state's share up front to save money long term. This will be a welcome relief. Districts can restore some of the programs they might have cut, although they will still continue to make large contributions to CalSTRS. And in the event of another recession, districts may have to pay an even bigger share of their budgets to pensions. What else can be done? Along with agreeing with Newsom's payments, Lawmakers could fund more of CalSTRS debt in the future, although that would leave less money for other state needs, like childcare and fire prevention. Another idea is that lawmakers could go further and switch pensions from new workers to a 401k type plan, where they would assume the risk and costs. Or lawmakers could also give current workers the option of converting future earnings to a 401k type plan. But that would happen only if the California Supreme Court decides that pension rules can be changed for previously hired workers, as urged by former Governor Jerry Brown. 
Or lawmakers could increase school funding at a faster pace, which would require the state to raise taxes. These are tough choices, but perhaps none is tougher than the cost of inaction. Tell Governor Newsom, lawmakers, and your school board what you think. A lot is at stake.